In this movie, I'm going to look at five different examples of how solid element operations can be used in ARCHICAD. The first example, we're going to look at trim to roof methods. In this instance, what we have here is some walls that need to be trimmed back to four bits of overlapping roof. Select the walls and use a regular trim to roof command. This works pretty well, but the downside is, is if I then select one of the roof elements and decide to change its angle, you see the piece of wall, or the walls, are left behind. They don't extend and they don't trim backwards. So in the second example, what I'll do is exactly the same type of operation, but this time using solid element operations. So I've selected the walls, and the next thing I need to do is activate the solid element operations palette from the design menu. In, the case, in this case, the walls are the target elements. And if I select the roof elements, these are the operators. I then have five different options, subtraction, with and without, upwards and downwards extrusion, intersection, and addition. In this case, I want to do an upwards extrusion. So I'll use this, and it will tell the attributes to stay as they are, hit execute, and you'll see the walls trim. If I close the palette, select one of the roof elements, and this time change the pitch, you'll see that the walls automatically retrim to the new height. They will also extend, but they will only extend to the maximum limit of the height of the wall. Another example of this is to trim these three sets of walls to what's a relatively complex shape for Archicad because the walls are then trimmed to multiple pieces of roof. So what we'll do in this first example is select all the walls, these are my target elements. I'll then select the upper piece of roof, these are the operators, and I'll do what's called a subtraction with upwards extrusion. Execute that, that trims back the walls. I'll then repeat the command, select the walls again, again these are the targets. I'll then select the lower piece of roof, this is the operator, but this time I'll do a subtraction with downwards extrusion. Execute that. And what you'll see if I close the palette, spin this round, you see the walls are now trimmed back to these roof elements. And if I actually select the roof, turn its layer off, what I'm left with are the three bits of wall completely trimmed to these roof elements. However, one po point to note, turn the roof layer back on, if I was to delete the operator, so the roof, then the walls will revert to their original values. In this next example, I have a simple U-shaped stair, but underneath the stair in the 3D window, I have bits of walls that I want to extend up to act as supports. The way to effectively trim these walls is through solid element operations. In the first instance, again, I'll select the walls. These are the target elements. I'll then select the stair, this is the operator, and I want to do a subtraction with upwards extrusion. This time what I'll do is tell the walls to inherit the attributes of the operator. Effectively what this means is once the trim is completed, if I select the stair and hide the layer, what you'll see is the top of the walls are now painted with the materials of the stair. This next example allows me to create some complex geometry and what you'll see here is similar to the last example I'm going to use some objects to cut some holes within the wall. However you see the objects are set for a wireframe display. This is because if I select one of them it's on the layer called operators and the operators layer has its display properties set for wireframe only. If I turn this off, put it back to normal 3D, what you'll see is the objects reappear. Back to wireframe, okay. And what I'm going to do now is repeat the previous exercises. The wall is a target. If I select all of the objects, these are the operators. And I'm going to do a subtraction. Inherit the attributes of the operator. Execute this. Close the dialog. You see the operation is complete. What I can do is hide the layer. And you'll see that we're left with these holes chopped into the wall element. 
One final thing I can do here, again, if I turn the layer back on, is if I actually start to take some of these elements and change the properties. So the material, rather than being plain white, if I make it yellow, you'll see now a yellow piece of wall appears, and likewise if I select this object here, change its materials so that it's now blue, and if I select this one, I just simply hide the layer again, you'll see that I'm left with these shapes, cut out of the wall with the various different materials. For the final example, I'm going to switch to a different version of ARCHICAD. And in here I have a building that's already been completed. This building, if I take a look at the 3D window, has a 3D isometric view set up from which we can save 3D documents. These are scalable, documentable um, 3D documents where I can add dimensions and text and annotations. In this one I've used a curve shape marquee to chop a shape through the building, but if I want more interesting geometry, what I can do is go back to 3D. If I turn on the layer called Operators, there's a shape that I've already placed, which is this large um, elliptical shape. And if I zoom out slightly so I can select this shape, I'll activate Solid Element Operations. This is my Operator element, and if I use the arrow tool and select all, Control A or Apple A on a Mac. I want to do a subtraction, these are the target elements, 44 of them, I want to do a subtraction, hit the execute, Archicad will process, close this dialog and then hide the layer called operators by selecting layers and hide. I can now create a fresh 3D document. And you see I'm left with a shape that just simply would not be possible to create using the regular marquee or other selection methods.